Hey there, welcome to CPQ series and you are watching SFDC Chronicle. Today we will explore about pricing method of CPQ. Before going to different type of pricing method that we have in Salesforce CPQ, let me give an overview on pricing method. So whenever we sell something to our customer, the main part is price because from there we get our revenue profit. Now generally in Salesforce, we store prices in price book. You all are familiar with price book more or less. Now suppose we have two different customer and want to sell some product to them with different prices. So same product, two different customer with two different prices. How we can able to achieve it? We can create two different price book for both of them and can use them when we are going to sell the product. But that is too much tedious work to maintain prices. So that's the reason CPQ provided us different types of pricing method so that it will reduce the overhead to maintain prices in different price book entries. And it will help us to store or track the changes that changes on the price like how much price we, are, we have provided to customer A and what is the price we have provided to customer B and what is my actual price of that product in different types of price field. So to store different type of price, we generally use original price. That is my price book price, whatever I have entered in my price book the standard price that is mainly the original price and there are different type of special price also there regular price partner price net price different type of price we use to capture different price data so that is mainly why we use pricing method in salesforce now, what are the different type of pricing method that we can able to use? Those are block pricing, percent of total pricing, option pricing override, cost plus markup pricing, and contracted pricing. So we'll explain all of those pricing in details on after some time. Now let's give a brief overview of all the pricing method. So what do, you, do we mean by block pricing? Block pricing is a static pricing. It should not depend upon any quantities, anything else. Just like I want to have a, my mm, subscription on any like OTT channel. So I give if there is one to five person on that particular subscription they want to subscribe then I will give them a flat price of say $50 and if it is go beyond 6 to 10 then I will give it on $70 like this so that is a flat price now percent of total pricing that is similar to block pricing now what is percent of total pricing suppose I have four product in my quote line editor. Now the fifth product that I will choose that should be a certain percentage of that four product. Suppose 20% of whatever net price or list price those four product have that will be my list price of that fifth product. That is how percent of total pricing work. Now the third one is suppose a standalone I have a product called product A or mm, memory card. Okay, 
So when I sell the, that memory card as a standalone product, at that time I will cost it say $100. But when I use it with any phone, with phone I am selling the memory card as a bundle, at that time that memory card should have $50 price. Huh. We can do it, we can achieve it via option pricing override. Option pricing override is only work with bundle option and it will not work with any standalone product. Now the fourth one is cost plus markup pricing. We can able to define cost for a particular product. Now on that particular cost, suppose we have provided a cost of say $20 for a product and we also give sales rep the ability to provide a markup on that particular $20 product so that they can sell it on $25 or $26, whatever they want. So $20 is my cost and after that, if sales rep want to provide some markup, they can able to provide it. We can do it via cost plus markup pricing. Now the fifth one is contracted pricing. What is contracted pricing? Contracted pricing is, suppose my, I have two customer, customer A and customer B. Now I deal with customer A more than customer B. So what I want that uh, customer A should get more discount or uh, less price whenever I sell something to them. So how I am able to do that one so that customer A can only get the benefit. That is why contracted pricing. So these are the different type of pricing method that we have in CPQ. And we will explain in detail on how to set up those one, how it works in our code line editor in something. Now, we have talked about different type of pricing. Now you may be thinking that we have so many pricing method. Now, if in a single method, in a single product, if we define more than one price method, then which one will take first precedence? To check that one, let's see this diagram. So first precedence will be taken by bundle, check whether the in a particular bundle I have defined some uh, sorry uh, in a product if I check bundle checkbox has checked at that time what will happen that whenever that option is selected on the bundle whatever price I have provided on that particular option that should not be granted instead it will be shown as included in bundle. So it will not show any price and no price will be added at the total for that particular option. So if your bundle checkbox is checked in your product, that should get the first priority. Once that will get the first priority, then what will happen? If you have not checked anything uh, on your product as as the checkbox is not checked then what will happen so if on that particular product you have defined any block price or percent of total pricing if you have defined anything then that will get second precedence and that will be used now if that is also not defined it will check for is any option price override mentioned in your uh, product? If yes, then it will use option price override else it will use whatever you have provided in your price book and that will determine the list price of that particular product. Now list price is the basic base price that is it's derived from this thing and uh, 
upon that list price actually we we cost the customer net price whatever price we get in the net price that is the actual price the customer need to pay to us so list price is the base price if we did not provide it any discount or we did not uh, define any cost markup then what will happen the list price will be my net price now if i define a cost markup then what will happen if yes then it will use the cost markup first if no then it will apply if i have any contracted pricing or not and that will be stored on the special price field and that will eventually go into my net price and customer has to pay that net price if there is no cost markup there is no contracted pricing then whatever is my list price that will be go to my net price and customer has to pay, has to pay that much of amount so that is how and like using my contracted pricing and cost mass um, cost so using contracted pricing i can able to reduce my cost from whatever is defined in the list price and cost plus markup i will increase the list price from what increase my net price from whatever it is defined in the list price hopefully you are able you are get some idea about which pricing method will get priority on upon which one now let's look all those thing in salesforce on action so i have already logged into my cpq salesforce org and i am in setup home page now let's start with the block pricing so how to define a block pricing so first i navigate to the product and i have created a product called netflix now mm, the main thing that is uh, come first that is this one let me read that one okay so pricing method this is the one that plays the role so here we can define by default it will be list but you can check it, change it to block cost percent of total so in this one we are talking about block so we have selected block block will be like flat price so in case of block what will happen uh, once we uh, set the pricing method as block what we need to do we need to go to the related price and there we have option called block prices so in the block prices what i need to define that for medium subscriber that is where the range is from 1 to 4 in that case i should provide prices 80% now for a large subscriber suppose 5 to 11 uh, 5 to 10 so if you define 11 that will be considered 5 to 10 5 to 10 the price should be 150 let's see it in action uh i have a quote okay i have not okay let's select a quote Okay, let's navigate to this one. And click on edit lines. So, if you are not familiar with what is bundle product, uh what how we can navigate to this code and code lines how we can able to uh, add some product i have some previous video please look into that one it will give you a brief idea about all those things 
So just search for Netflix and select that one. So by default it's one. So for one to five, what I have defined one to four, I have defined 80. Now let me change it to five. Let's see what happened. Once I change it to five, I need to click on calculate button and see my net price change to 150. That is five to ten. Now if there is some criteria like that, that you have defined a last subscriber from 5 to 10. Now, um, someone requested you that uh, my subscriber will be uh, for 12 person. Now, what to do that? Uh, how we can able to get that one? So you have defined the range for only 5 to 10. Then how will able to get that one? That for two extra um, subscriber, how you will able to adjust that one? So then, what you can give in the over over rate you can provide something like whenever it increased by one or two you need to add twenty dollar more okay so, okay so that is how it works now let's move on to the second one that is percent of total pricing now, how percent of total pricing work that uh, I have defined. Uh, so first navigate to the product and I am now in shipping insurance. Now in this one, first thing first, what I need to do, I need to change the pricing method as percent of total. Now once I change it to percent of total, some extra thing I need to define. That is, what is my percentage that should be uh, used to derive the price of this percent of total from other one. So I have defined it as 10 percent. Now in which base it will calculate? I have set net. Uh, you can select list and something else as well. So let me show you what are the option that is present there. So you can see list, regular and custom. Those are the total base present and percent of total category so what you can define here i have provided insurance that uh, whichever product i selected if their product family is insurance then i should use that one okay now let me go to the quote and show you like i have already selected the um, product for my demo purpose that is copy machine firewall laptop 13 inch and shipping insurance so shipping insurance will get the price from other product so my in my price book i have defined 500 as the list price but if you see it's coming as 530 suppose i change it to four okay and i when i click on calculate the list price or net price of this shipping insurance should change now I click on calculate it should change so see it changed to 920 so that is how depending upon other or uh, other product prices this price will vary now suppose i don't want that it should go beyond 1000 or it should not go beyond uh, whatever is mentioned in the in the price book list price or it should not be minimum than whatever i have defined in my list price in that case what will happen uh, how we can able to maintain that one there is one field called percent of total constraint in this one, I can select list prices minimum or list prices maximum. So using that one, I can able to control like uh, what I want minimum or maximum for that particular product that I am able to. So we can able to do that via this one. Now let's move on to the next one that is our 
option price override. Now we have this one laser printer. Now in the laser printer, I have an option called printer high capacity tray. For that one, uh, if I want to override whatever is provide whatever list price I have provided for this particular option uh, in my price book if I want to override that one so what I can do in the unit price I can mention whatever price I want to give it to this one and that will become whenever I select laser printer with this product option so instead of calling it from this uh, product price book it will get the price from unit price so that is how your option pricing override will work now let's move on to the next one that is cost plus markup pricing now cost plus markup pricing for that one first you need to change the pricing method as cost once you change the pricing method as cost what you need to do, you need to go to the related and here is one related list called cost. Here, what you need to do, you need to define the cost here, whatever you want. Whatever cost you want, you can provide it here. So suppose in this case, I have provided uh, $2,100. Now, if I go to my code and select this particular firewall uh, option or product and I came into this code line editor page here, what I will see if I click on this one, what I will see, I will see that unit price or my net price is coming from my cost that is 2100, but my unit price is 2400. Now, I want to increase this net total. So suppose um, UST, I provided more 1000 and then I click on calculate so my net unit price will go up that is 3100 plus 1000. So that is how my special price came and from there it got the net price. So if you want to increase your cost, you can use this markup variable. Here you can use the percentage or UST, whichever is fine with you, you can use that one. So that is how my cost and markup pricing works for me. Now let's move on to the contracted pricing. So contracted pricing, how that will work? that will work I am into the account and in the account related list I got this related list called contracted price and by if you click on new you can able to create new contract price so here you can search whatever product you want you can provide the price as well or you can also provide uh, by not giving the product here you can use this product information if you want to apply this particular price in more than one field using this filter field that is product family code or product using that one you can able to provide the same price in much more products so in this case for printed toner cartridge i have selected prices 100 so whenever actually printer uh, toner cartridge has a, a price of 150 but as we have selected is 100 for this particular account so that is what why whenever we selected a code of that particular account and we selected that particular product the price of the product will be $100 so if I go to price book it's selected as 125 but if I go there if I go on my this one so what I will see I will see my regular price as 100 and 
So that's why my net price is also coming as 100. Because for this one, I have provided a contract price as 100. And uh, you need to define the price method as list. So that is how your contracted price work. Now, you are familiar with the account hierarchy that an account can have many children. And if you, there is a good news that if you define a contracted price on your, on your parent account, then it will be inherited to your child account. Now, if you don't want to inherit that one, all the contracted price in your child, then there is a checkbox. You can check that one and that one will not be cascaded to your child account. Now, you want that. I have a, like a contracted price for four product in my child record, child account. I want three products should be inherited from parent, but one should not be. How to do that one? In CPQ, we have that functionality. So in the child product, you need to create a contracted price with the same product and different price, whatever price you want there. Then it will it will first check with if there is any contracted price on child level, it will pull up the price from that contracted price, else it will go to the parent inherited one. So that is how my contracted price work. So that's all about pricing methods for today. So today we are conclude our session with this much. In next session, we'll come up with some more new features of CPQ. Till then, stay tuned, stay healthy, and please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.